Tolman. I'm chair of the Department of Chemistry at the University of Minnesota, and this is video number two in my three video series on which is better, the book or the movie, Advice for Scientists, basically focused on how to give a good talk. The last video talked about how to build the story and how important that was in constructing a good talk. And what I'm going to discuss now is some of the most important things I think one has to do in making good slides. So, uh, one of the worst things you can do in giving a talk is to give slides that are, are, are problematic, that have errors in them, are difficult to read, or distract people from the story that you're trying to tell. And so, uh, there are many good resources for how to give a good talk, and, and many of these resources have specific advice about making good slides, and I'm going to choose just a few of these uh, pieces of advice to give you here. So first of all, the, one of the key things that you need to do is keep the background simple. In other words, don't use a background like this. Uh, backgrounds like this are very distracting and are not necessary. Here's another example of a terrible background. It's just very distracting, there's too much going on, it's much cleaner and easier to follow a talk and to focus on the story if the background is very simple. A second piece of advice is avoid something that people call visual info glut. And here's an example of a whole bunch of information. Lots and lots of things on this slide. It's incredibly cluttered, uh, very distracting, and very hard to follow. So you want to avoid this sort of thing. One piece of information, or maybe two on one slide, is sufficient um, uh, for people to understand. And again, keeps people from being distracted from the main story of what you're trying to say. Animations are really distracting, so don't do them. So things like this, or like this, or like this are just not helpful. Some level of layering is sometimes helpful when giving a, a talk. Um, to sort of layer one piece of data onto another can be very helpful to the eye, but in general animations are something that you should definitely avoid even though they're present in Power, uh, PowerPoint or Keynote. Uh, text is really critically important. Uh, there's a tendency, of course, to use too much text on the slide, but how you use that text is also really important. Uh, one thing to remember is that the audience should be listening or reading, but not both. So you, if you have a quote or something, uh, try not to read it. Sometimes it's useful to read it, but you want to keep the reading uh, uh, minimal. Second, use a consistent font. Okay, Choose one type of font, and uh, typically the most important fonts to use are ones that are sans serif fonts, like Arial or Helvetica, uh, but not Times. So studies have shown that Times or Times New Roman fonts are particularly good for readers who are reading books or uh, written material, but on slides, something like Arial Helvetica is better. And you want to keep the size the same throughout all your slides. That keeps it from being distracting. And avoid cute fonts that have uh, lots of bells and whistles associated with them, because again, they tend to be distracting. Colors are great, but only if you use sparingly. Too many colors are just simply distracting and people get annoyed by it. The font size is really critically important. And uh, these fonts here should be pretty readable to you. Um, this is 40 point fonts. Um, you can tell here this is 14 point font and you can't even read it. Even though on a computer screen when you're making the slides, you could probably read it just fine. Remember, big fonts, consistent fonts and align them well. Okay, so when they're misaligned, it's distracting. Uh, tables. There's a tendency to want to show all your data in a table, and this is a very bad idea. Uh, here's a terrible table to put on a, on, in a talk. Great in a paper that you're writing because you need to show all the data, but in a talk, there's no way this is useful to anybody. This one's a little bit better, but it's still not great. It has some t too many different colors. Uh, there's a little bit too much going on at different kinds of fonts. At least it's more readable and it's smaller. Um, but uh, a table like this is probably even better because it's large, it's easy to read, it has several pieces of data on it, but not too much. Um, and if you're going to use a table, you want to use a table like this. One of the biggest mistakes that people make is, and especially chemists, is we have a tendency to like to use graphics, but we tend to use graphics that, uh, that are colorful and, and interesting, but we tend to make them too small. So for example, I'm editor-in-chief of a journal in organic chemistry, and so of course I like to show off covers of the journal in organic chemistry. But the question is, is this an effective way to show off covers of inorganic chemistry, or is this a better way of showing off? And I think it's clear that using large graphics 
that fill the entire screen are a much more effective way of sending a, a message or telling a story than using much smaller graphics. And we, as chemists, tend not to do this. We tend to, to take our graphics and pile multiple graphics onto a single slide rather than doing this, which I think is much more effective. Don't use clip art. Plots. Um, there are many, many ways to make bad plots. And one of the fundamentally important ways that people most often make bad plots is they use the standard settings on standard programs like Excel. And if you use the standard settings on standard programs like Excel, you'll get plots like this one, which are bad on many, many levels. The font sizes are too small. The plot is in red and green, two very bad colors to use together because a large percentage of your audience will be colorblind and won't, colorblind and won't be able to tell the difference. Um, the data points are not shown clearly. Um, there's many, many things about this plot that, that are not good. Too many hash marks that are inappropriate for the scale, and so, etc. This plot's even better. Um, it's much clearer. It's much easier to read. The color scheme is more effective. Perhaps even better is this plot, which fills the entire screen. Now it's easily readable. The axes are clearly identified. The data points are easy to see. The lines are easy to see and differentiate because of color and being dashed. Um, and the key parameters that, that the reader should know are shown in a way that's very easy to read. So this is a much better way of presenting the data than we've seen previously. Here's some other examples of what I would consider to be very bad plots. And these are just basically data dumps from experiments that were performed using UVVIS. And you can see that there's too many different colors involved. There's um, sections that are too difficult to read. There's too much, two different sets of overlapping spectra on the same slide. It's incredibly difficult uh, slide to, to handle. Um, this similar data can be presented in a much clearer way. And here's an example of data being presented in a much clearer way, using a photograph to show the colors of the two different compounds, the two different UVVIS spectra with the axes, with clear, large font labeling. It's much easier to follow and understand this spectrum than the ones you saw in the previous slide. ChemDraw is another issue. Uh, there's a tendency to use ChemDraw drawings that are too, either are too small or inappropriate in terms of their um, uh, spacing and their aspect ratios. And so what you want to do is you want to choose your ChemDraw settings so that the ChemDraw drawings are sufficiently large so you can really clearly see. And you want to draw it with some artistic intent so that people can really get a sense of what you mean by what you're drawing. Here's another example of some molecules that are near and dear to my heart that are drawn in a way that's really easy to understand. You can see exactly what's going on. There's some coloring in there just to draw your eye to what I think is important, which is the copper hydroxides at the center of these compounds. Um, it, this is the kind of chem draw that you want to do, uh, not what was shown at the top of the last slide. So that was some advice about how to uh, make good slides. The third video that I'm going to talk about it, uh, deals with the issue of actually speaking in public, uh, the actual uh, talking and dealing with the fear of public speaking.